Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. We hear about the changing times. Is it the times that change or the people within those times? We talk about a need for change and then don't recognize the change when it comes along. Around 500 B.C., a Greek philosopher declared that all is flux, nothing stays still, nothing endures but change. Yet, an old French proverb tells us, the more things change, the more they remain the same. Confusing, isn't it? At least we know that time never stands still. But does it? Jack! Jack, my God! Uh, uh, honey, you... You're shivering. I just had the most ghastly dream. I had a strange one, too. Mine was so frightening, so real. So was mine. A voice told me to go to the old graveyard. And to take six paces behind the stone in the northwest corner. How did you know? Because I had exactly the same dream. drama, Too Early, Too Late, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elizabeth Pennell and stars Russell Horton and Marion Seldes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Jack and Ruth Peterson felt themselves lucky to inherit a ramshackle old house in Connecticut where his grandparents had once lived. The place was closed for a long time until last summer when the couple began fixing it up. They recalled past holidays there and decided it would be a great place to spend New Year's Eve. They have invited a friend from childhood to join them. Ah, good dinner, Ruth. Sorry Dave didn't get here in time to eat with us. Mm, he should have been here by now. I just didn't realize how late it is. I hope nothing's happened to him. That's the nuisance of not having a phone. First thing next spring, we you are going I'm beginning to think we shouldn't have come here in the wintertime. Oh, nonsense. I'd rather be here than anywhere else in the world. Hey, anybody home? It's Dave. I'll get the door. Dave. Dave, come in. We were worried. You're welcome, old buddy. Where have you been? Oh, I've been lost. You're kidding. You know this area better than we do. Well, it's wilder than it used to be. It's so dark. You know, I'm accustomed to city lights. And now the road's slippery. I couldn't make it up your driveway. Have you had anything to eat? Not a thing. I'm starved. Oh, I hope there's a spark left in that wretched stove. Mm, and while Ruth stirs up the coals, I'm going to get you a drink. I feel better now. <laughs> Back on those icy roads, your reunion in the woods sounded like a crazy idea. Mm, I had this sudden urge to go back to the old days. I remember, Dave, when we were kids, the three of us swore we'd be friends forever. Yeah, I remember how the three of us used to leave the other kids and go off to the old graveyard. Yeah, yeah. and just sit there quietly. I never did let on how scared I was. Of ghosts. I felt that all those dead eyes were looking at me. The old folks disapprovingly and the children begging me to help oh, them. Honey, I thought you liked the old graveyard. Oh, I did in a creepy sort of way, but... But those ancestors of ours seemed almost too real. Hey, do you suppose the inscriptions on those stones are, are still readable today? Of course. We checked up this past summer. Oh, I don't know. That place is terribly overgrown now. The bushes are just tangled everywhere. Well, I'd like to go back to that old graveyard and take a look. Hey, how about tomorrow? Mm -mm -mm. Sheer ice underfoot. Honey, let's try it. Might not be so bad. You two. Just call me up. Uh-oh. The storm's back. I should have fixed that broken shutter. This house is like a sieve when the wind blows. It just sends chills into every corner. Is it okay if I throw another log on the fire? Yeah. Nothing like a roaring fire in the country. <laughs> I remember these sudden windstorms. Mm, I love them. Maybe that's why I went into the business. Say, that's right. You still working on those wind machines? You bet. We're making real progress. I can tell you right now, you're on the wrong track. What do you mean? I mean that old-fashioned stuff is out, completely out. Our ancestors tried it. You, uh, know something better? Yeah, darn right I do. Don't you realize we're in a nuclear age? Yes, and it's much too dangerous. No, no, not the way I'm working at it. We're almost ready to conquer nature. <laughs> needs your nuclear power. That's what the wind can Jack, do. Jack, close the door. Oh, Lord, the lights have gone out. That's a 
does it. I've got to put a new lock on this door. I knew we shouldn't have come up here in the wintertime. Well, don't you have kerosene lamps? Yeah, there are plenty of lamps in the house, but Jack couldn't find any kerosene. Everyone's brought it up for those fancy new stoves. <laughs> Is this ever a backward country? Now, just you wait. No, no, wait. Don't panic. We've got plenty of candles. And we don't need a refrigerator. I chip some eyes off the rain spout, and the champagne's been chilling for hours. It's nearly midnight. Time to welcome the new year. <laughs> Here's to us and to a wind that blows everyone good. Well, let's conquer that wind. Here's to nuclear energy. Oh, wait a minute, you guys. While we're drinking champagne, millions of people are starving. I drink to a better chance for survival for everyone. Yeah, that's what we all want. A happier new year. Wake up. Oh, do I have to? Yes. Hold me tight. I want to be sure I'm alive. Oh, honey, you sure? I just had the most ghastly dream. I had a strange one, too. Oh, but mine was so frightening, so real. So was mine. Listen, there was this... this terrible man. I guess he was terrible. I couldn't exactly see him. But he kept telling me over and over that I had to obey his orders. That's exciting. What did he tell you to do? He told me I must go to the graveyard. When? At noon, today. I don't believe it. You don't have to believe in dreams, do you? Now listen, there's more. The voice told you to go exactly six paces behind the furthest gravestone in the northwest corner. How did you know? Because I had exactly the same dream. But that's impossible. Is it? Uh, what was the next step? Uh, to dig a hole. To the depth of two feet? Yes, that's what he said, and then we... Uncover something that might change the whole course of, of the, the next, next decade. decade. It's weird. You and I agree on a lot of things, but we were never any good at ESP. Wait till Dave hears about this. Breakfast will be ready in a minute, I hope. Oh. The stove sure feels good. Hope you weren't cold during the night. No, no, there were plenty of blankets. For, I don't know. I'm chilled to the bone. Oh, sorry about that. Here, here's a cup of coffee. Oh, thanks. You know, um, I, uh, I had the most extraordinary dream last night. You too? Yeah. Now, wait, 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 wait till I tell you. There, you know, there was this disembodied voice. A man's. Yeah, but, you know, I, I had no idea what sort of person he was. He, he, he sounded as though he knew me and... And he wanted me to do something. Oh, no. What did he want you to do? He, he ordered me to go to the old graveyard. When? Uh, today, uh, at noon. And to take six paces straight back from the last gravestone in the northwest corner. How did you know that? Because I had the same dream. And so did I. It's incredible. Uh, let me tell you the rest. We know. You're supposed to dig a hole. That's it. Two feet down. And you'll find... Well, the voice didn't say exactly what we'd find. Oh, well, not what. But he indicated it was something important. Hey... <laughs> Hey, now just come on a minute. We're acting as though there really is something buried there. I don't know what to think. I know, I'm scared. How could three people have the same dream if there wasn't something to it? It's simple. Last night we all had the old graveyard on our minds. But we were talking about a time years ago when we were just kids. Those were vivid memories. And wait a minute. I did say I'd like to see the graveyard today. But I said I wouldn't go. Only I knew you'd come along. Well, I have a theory about dreams. What is it? I believe that dreams take up where an interrupted thought left off. I, I, I don't follow you. Last evening, we were all thinking about going to the graveyard, right? And then the storm blew up and the lights went out. Yes, that's right. We each concentrated on the same thing. And then, boom. I mean, don't you see how logical it is? Mm, that's an analysis even Freud might approve of. Elementary. So... We just go ahead with our original plans. But I think since we're going to the graveyard, we might as well take along a couple of shovels. Just in case. Are you two really going to the graveyard? We're all going, Ruth. And just for kicks, we're going right at noon. Look. I've forgotten how beautiful it is. We've never been here in the wintertime. It looks like an ice palace. Hmm. Hey, this one's my great, great, great grandfather. <laughs> he lived to a ripe old age. Why did 
they carved such an awful skull thing with wings. Oh, that's the traditional angel of death. But the person who lies under here was drowned in Lake Ontario. How'd you know that? It says so. Hey, listen. A church bell. But there hasn't been a church around here in a hundred years. Yes, there's a church over the hill. Ah, it's two miles away. Oh, it's a clear day. The atmosphere and wind are just right for sound to carry. And the dream said noontime, so if it's striking... Do you suppose... I'm getting out of here. No, no, just just a minute, Ruth. I'll tell you one thing. We couldn't possibly dig a hole in the ground. Why not? Because the ground is frozen absolutely solid. Look, I'll show you. Well, uh, I'll try over here. Yeah, you see, Ruth? Look, it's hard as marble. Well, I'm glad of that. Because anyway, we could get arrested for digging up a grave. Only we're supposed to dig beyond the last tombstone. That, that's out of the cemetery. The ground will be just as hard over there. Well, at least we can see if there's some sort of marker. Yeah, why not? Uh, oh, here's the last stone. Uh, okay, let's mm-hmm. measure off six paces. Uh, how long is a pace? That's a big step, like this. One, two... Three, four, five, six. Okay, I'll show you why we can't possibly dig a hole. Uh, you try over there, Jack, and uh, don't don't break the shovel. Okay, here goes. Good Lord. The ground is soft as butter. It can't be. Just one step back and look. It's hard as a rock. Uh, get, come over here and dig. Watch. I don't like the sight of old bones. Two feet down. We're almost there, Jack. Uh, I found something. Here, here, scrape the dirt away. Uh, be careful. Okay. Well, I'll be. Look. Ruth. Look. What is it? Oh. Something shiny. I've never seen anything like it. What have they found? Something shiny, Ruth said. Can it be gold? Surely not treasure buried by Captain Kidd. Although there's at least one legend which claims that some of his loot was buried in the foothills of Connecticut. However, that's another story. Our three friends have made a surprising discovery, and the circumstances which surround their findings become more strange by the minute, as you'll learn presently in Act Two. What is the fabric of dreams? Are they fashioned of fragments from the past? Or do they portend the future? Something remarkable has just taken place. Three people have had the same dream. Moreover, this dream has led them to an old graveyard on the first day of a new year in the 1980s. They have just dug a hole in the ground, roughly coffin-shaped. And what they uncovered has left them stunned. How can this be? Jack, don't touch it. I think it's some kind of a bomb. It can't be a bomb. It's it's encased in, in glass. No, that's not glass. I struck it hard with a spade. Plastic? No, I don't think so. Plastic doesn't gleam like that. It's it's made of a substance I've never seen before. But what is it? I'd say it's a time capsule. I'm coming. One more minute, we'll be drenched. No, there's not a cloud in the sky. Wind. Hang on to me, Jack. I can't stand up. Hey, get down on the ground, everybody. No need to behave like that. Get up. Yes. Whose voice? The man in, in our dream. Oh, don't let your imagination run away with you. I knew you'd come. Greetings. Isn't it, isn't it his voice? Where's it coming from? Over there, by that last tombstone. But that's where one of my ancestors is buried. He died in 1790. You're so right. It can't be a voice from the dead. Right, the dead. Ah, someone is playing tricks. They planted a tape recorder. Wrong about that. Tape recorders went out of use years ago. But you came from there, from, from, from the grave of... You must be my great... Nonsense. Do I look like a man from the 18th century? No, you're 
dressed just like us. Of course. Then you must be a descendant of one of the people buried here. That, that would make you a distant cousin. Sorry to disappoint you. I'm no blood relative, but I do know all these people. I know them very well. Ah, let's stop this nonsense. You're a joker. You were crouching behind that stone. And it's time to tell us what this charade is all about. I don't play charade. This has to be some sort of game. Surely you haven't forgotten your dream. Who are you? That dear lady is of little importance. What does matter is who you are and what you're going to do about it. Would you stop talking in riddles and tell us what you're driving at? In due course. Right now, we must all get down to business. So far, you have obeyed instructions and uncovered what we sent you to find. Tell us what that... That thing in the ground is. You were right in calling it a time capsule. I suppose in a way that's what it is. No ancestor of mine ever buried an object that looks like that. I don't think anyone thought about time capsules back in the 1780s. Exactly. So, if it's just been buried, who wants to open it? We know everything that's going on today. Who said anything about today? This capsule contains... The future. Oh, then I'm going to break into it. Not so fast. Here's the spade. Let's dig it up. No need for that. Put the spade down. Okay, and then help us get this thing out of the ground. It's very simple. Stand back. The capsule will come out right over there. Do you see what I have in my hand? Well, sure. It's a flashlight. What an antiquated idea. This is a beamer. A what? I focus the beam like this, and... The capsule's coming out of the ground. We'll be tracked over here where there's space for us all to gather around. Hey, it's bigger than I thought. Must be nearly four feet long. The last one we buried was much bigger. We've come a long way in the past century. Well, for Pete's sake, open it. Why don't you do it? Very easy. Just lift off the shell. Hey, Dave, I'll, I'll, I'll help you. Uh, you see? You see how light it is? It's, it's, it's like something out of science fiction. There is no fiction about these scientific instruments. Unbelievable. Computers? Scanners? What strange-looking bottles. Why, that's a miniature space module. Uh, they've put too much in here. I told them there would be only three. By three? Uh, do you mean Ruth and Dave and me? Uh, are you talking about us? Of course. Why do you think you've been summoned here? We haven't the slightest idea. You'd better find out. How stupid can you be? But no one has explained... I know, I know, I know. And the young lady is shivering. Well, it's the first of January. It's cold. We'll fix that. We'll start a fire. Oh, come on. This frozen wood will never burn. Who needs wood? This nuclear pellet will do. Nuclear pellet? You want to blast us all out of this world? Oh, what a lot you have to learn. One small pellet from this bottle. And this is just the spot. There. Let's get away, Jack. But then there'll be an explosion. It sure is. If this crazy man is really playing around with a neutron. Calm yourselves, my friend. How do we know we can trust you? You have no alternative. We're all here together for a purpose. But, Mr. Uh, whoever you are, you'd better get to that purpose right now. We've had enough of these magic tricks. Warm yourselves by the fire while I get your material from the capsule. Then I'll give the proper instructions to each of you. One at a time. Feels good. No, this is crazy. All of it. That man's insane. I mean, he will be dangerous. He may be a madman, but by golly, I want to know everything he has to say. And one of the ships coming back. He's carrying something that looks like a, a big balloon. Your name is Jack, is that right? That's right. And you're the man who's working on energy sources through wind power? Well, I don't know how you know that, but it's true. Hang on to this inflated bag. It's filled with wind power. <laughs> the bag's so light it can't be filled with anything but wind. Oh, no, you're quite wrong. It contains instruments which weigh at least 100 pounds. 
Well, how can that be? Pay attention. First, tell me who lies under this stone. That's the, uh, the grave of my ancestor, Samuel Peterson. Did you know he was one of the first to build a windmill in this part of the country? Oh, that's very interesting. It could have been. But it wasn't. Why? Didn't it work? He tried. But all he ever got was a trickle of water. We offered to help him, but he was too busy to listen. Well, that was two centuries ago. If I could just show you what we're doing today... You can show me nothing. Open that bag. Well, all these things couldn't have come from that lightweight bag. When will you learn how easy it is to carry heavy objects when they're floated in hydrogen? No, no, that can't be. The, the slightest friction and everything would go up in flames. Uh, I'd forgotten you've not yet figured how to make hydrogen decombustible. But no matter. I'll give Jack one minute to look over the contents of the bag. And there's everything here that I've been working on. Much more. There's a computer, because I have one of those. Uh, not like this one. All these other things. Wonderful. A, a rotor, the new vertical blades, an electronic driving shaft, all in miniature. I've never seen such perfect scale models. Those are not scale models. Of course they are. Your cumbersome equipment is out of date. That small piece of machinery in your hand can power turbines to light a city or to move a 747. I don't believe it. You will when you learn how. Time to open the next bag. I'll get it. He's mad, you know. That stuff is a bunch of junk. But how can I tell without testing it? Your name is Ruth. Yes. I know nothing about machinery. You are concerned that some people don't have enough to eat, right? You have no idea how many people are dying of starvation. Open the bag. Good bottles and seed packets and chemical retorts? Enough there to feed the world many times over. You're joking. Those seeds can be treated to germinate within minutes rather than weeks. Oh, how wonderful if that were to be true. And then what are these... these pills? Each one contains more nutrients than a full-course meal. Then why haven't we heard about them? I try to keep up with all the literature. That's why I'm here. To help you. With a bag full of seed and pills? How do I know these things aren't poison? Is there no trust left in the world? You're a woman with a brain. Use it. A formula is there. Find out for yourself. He's gone for the third bag. This one has to be for you. And your name is David. You consider yourself an expert on nuclear power? On certain aspects of it, yeah. Well, that's the whole point, those... those aspects. Open the bag. Uh, another bag of tricks. <laughs> you know, I'm not interested in the scale model of a reactor. Our problem is getting rid of hazardous wastes. So on the right track. You're darn right we are. We are reprocessing uranium and plutonium, leaving no more than 10% radiation. That's too much. Well, I suppose you know how to get rid of it. Read the instructions and you'll find the way to end all thermal pollution. Huh, that'll be the day. It will, if you want it to be. Oh, the fire's going out. It's getting so dark. I think there's going to be a snowstorm. It's only a passing cloud, but I must be on my way. I'll inflate the bag so you can carry your precious materials home. You mean we can keep these things? Only if you make proper use of them. Well, come with us, then. There are a lot of questions I want to ask. Oh, no. No, you're on your own. If you three are doing more for humanity than the people buried under these stones, then prove it. Well, what do you expect us to do? You will use the information I have given you to help solve the problems of a troubled world. <laughs> That's a big order. We don't expect it to happen overnight. So you will have one month in which to make progress. Who's calling the shots? That's out of your hands and mine. But I'll meet you here one month from today at noon on February 1st to find out how you're doing. Good luck. With that 
last big gust of wind, the mysterious stranger vanished without a trace. Then the three bewildered people returned to the country house with what they called their bags of tricks. If you are skeptical, so were they. That strange presence had appealed to each of them individually on matters which concerned them deeply. If nothing else, they are consumed with curiosity. We hope you are too. Act three will begin presently. Our three friends have spent an extraordinary afternoon with a presence who did not identify himself. They have been challenged to show what progress can be made in important fields of a human endeavor. Baffled by the circumstances, they are compelled to examine the materials which have been placed in their hands. Several hours have passed, and their absorption has been complete. It all makes sense, Ruth. Every page of it. The combination of ingredients used in these pellets is fantastic. Why haven't we thought about using this formula? We've got to get to the lab to try this out. Now, how are we going to explain what happened today? There's no need to, Jack. Once we learn how to use these tools, the information is ours to demonstrate. Then you do believe that for some reason we've been chosen. All we can do now is believe in ourselves. I think it's time to pack up and go back to civilization. Well, I'm leaving right now. And if word gets to the suburbs that a city apartment house has blown up, you'll know something went wrong. Jack, you must come to bed. You've been working on the car every night this week with almost no sleep. It's nearly ready for testing. I am getting close, very close. How do you feel? Oh, I never feel better. Why? I just feel guilty about not cooking dinner. Well, there's time for dinner with so much to do. Yes, but we can't use up the food pills until I learn how to make more. Yeah, that does it. Now, I'll just turn on the ignition. It works. By heaven, Ruth, it works. What's so unusual about starting the motor? Uh, how'd you like to drive this car without ever buying another drop of gasoline? Jack, come into my office. Glad you called me, sir. I, I have something very important to show you. Now, Jack, what's this I hear about you not attending the WPNA meeting? We're too busy, sir. And uh, who do you think you're working for? I never believed so completely in wind power as I do right now. Now, let me show you my car. What the devil do I care about your car? Please, when you see it, you'll know what I've been working on all week. Well, uh, you can drive me to the plant. Three o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> sounding motor, isn't it? Yeah. Sounds okay to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, take a look at the gas gauge. Look. By you, young fool. It's empty. What kind of game are you playing? Just, uh, proving a point. Oh, yeah, uh, drive into that gas station. This car does not use gas. Oh, I suppose it's running on thin air. Exactly. I'm using wind power. <laughs> You're out of your mind. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull up over there and open the hood so you can see for yourself. <laughs> Any vertical bladed motor to the generator. That's right. At what speed? Well, I've only tested it up to 70 miles an hour. Yeah. How far will it go without being regenerated? Huh? I've only driven 250 miles, but it regenerates itself. Uh-huh. Jack, drive me back to the office at once. Jack. You must realize we have a tiger by the tail. Now, um, how many people know about this uh, invention of yours? Well, you're the first one I've come to. Good, good, good. So until the details can be worked out, this must be kept an absolute secret. Oh. No, no, uh, that, that's not the point. If we go into production immediately, we can lick the energy crisis. Now, first of all, Wind Power Associates must have an exclusive contract. But this is for everybody. We'll take out a patent in, in your name, of course. And Jack, from now on, you're a vice president and stockholder in the company. Well, I don't want a patent or a title. All I want is for you to back me up with a public demonstration tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow? You're madder than I thought. 
Uh, for your own protection, Jack. I'm not throwing you to the wolves. Who's Peterson? What's going on in here? Looks like a jungle. These seeds. There's just never been anything like them. Now, look, it's almost ready to be harvested. That whole side is wheat. And over here, it's rye. And in the tub, that's full of rice. Well, how did all that stuff get in here? The storeroom was empty just a couple of days ago. That's why I called you. I've been given a formula with which I treated these seeds. And you pour some water in that bowl, and I'll just show you what happens. Well, it better be good. Now, I'll sprinkle some of these seeds in the bowl. Now, watch. Well, I'll be a... Well, you're opening up like those magic flower things we had as kids. <laughs> they just start sprouting immediately. And when they're planted, well, there are the results. We can feed the world. Ruth, come into the conference room and uh, make a report. Mr. Bascom, you say you've come up with something that limits radiation? Well, yes, sir. I'd, uh, I'd like to show it to I'm you. I'm a very busy man. Can't you sketch in the details? Uh, no, sir. It's all set up in the testing room. I thought you'd been given instructions that no more nuclear devices were... Uh, sir, sir, this, uh, this experiment is different. Uh, I, it's like nothing you've ever seen. <laughs> is everything sealed? Uh, yes, sir. Sealed tight. Uh, put on your face mask. Uh, the light will be bright. Here goes. had your explosion, and according to the Geiger reading, there's a high radiation count. I installed a container which will open with the heat and pour its contents over the contaminated area. Uh, uh, watch, sir. Yeah, it's, it's, it's working. By George, the counter has stopped. Yes, sir. That means all contamination has been eliminated. David, if what you've just done can be proved... We must contact the Pentagon immediately. Ruth, are you home? Yes, but not for long. You're going to drive me to the airport. Oh, honey, I'm Bush. Nothing but disappointment all day, all week. I, I, what's this about an airport? Well, you know how well my work's been going. They've tested the formula. And they've learned how to make the food pills. Well, so why don't they ship them off to wherever they're needed most? Because if they fell into the wrong hands, they'd never get to the needy. I have the honor of launching a program. They're sending me overseas. Oh, the Pentagon. I'll never learn my way around this place. Just a minute, sir. Uh, y yes, ma'am. Sign look. here. Uh, look, ma'am, I've, I've been here five times in the last couple of days. I've Sign here. I've signed in duplicate and triplicate. I, I, I've even been fingerprinted. Look, please, could you tell me which way to room 1405? Down the hall to the left, then turn right. Mr. Bascom, we are deeply impressed by the documentation on your experiment. Uh, please, sir, would you untangle me from all this red tape so we can go to work on the disposal of hazardous waste? All in due time. You have given us what can be a clean bomb. Now, now uh, wait a minute. I want nothing to do with bombs. But if we had a missile which was truly clean... Imagine the possibilities. My information must not be used for making weapons. I am concerned with saving lives, not destruction. Now look, I want those documents back. I should have gone straight to the Nuclear Energy Commission. We work directly with them, of course. I know they'll be interested. Okay, then give me my papers and let me go. These have now become government property. Okay, I'll go to the president. Well, I'm sure that eventually he will want to see you. I mean right now. Naturally, you'll be living in Washington. We will provide security. A man with your information must be protected at all times. Oh, Dave. Am I ever glad to see you. That goes for me too, Jack. How you doing? Miserably. Before any damage is done, I must get to the president. How's it going with you? Ah, oh, rotten. I've drawn charts. I've filled in forms. The auto industry won't talk to me till their big convention in April. I tried going straight to the press. They think I'm a nut. Yeah, I know what you've been going through. Uh, excuse me. Hello? Hello? Who? Uh, louder, please. Uh, this, this connection is terrible. Hello? 
Hello. Bruce, where are you? In jail. Well, you're where? They put me in prison. For what reason? For being a spy. Well, you're kidding. Darling, I'm only allowed one phone call. Please, please do what you can to get me out of this place. I'm in the... Bruce. Bruce. What's the matter with this line? What is it? <laughs> Ruth's been thrown in jail. I, I have no idea where, and, and, and the phone's dead. Well, you know where we're supposed to be three days from now. Oh, we can't go without Ruth. Oh, we may have to. is colder than ever. Yeah. Mind if I throw some wood on the fire? Oh, go ahead. I guess we'll be up all night. I can't imagine getting any sleep. You you do think he'll be there, though, don't you? I'll have to be. I get more worried about Ruth by the minute. Well, he's the one who's responsible. He'll have to bring her back. Oh! oh. Ruth! <laughs> darling! You all right, Ruth? I'm okay. I wouldn't go through that again for anything. How'd you get away? And they released me yesterday without any explanation. I was put on a plane and sent home, and I rented a car at the airport, and here I am. Oh, thank the Lord. Of course, I had to be here. Tomorrow, we have a rendezvous. I'm sorry to get up so late. Good morning. I'm not sure that it is. Maybe I'm not awake yet, but I feel very strange. I hope you didn't have bad dreams like mine all night long. Well, your dreams couldn't have been as wild as mine. I need another cup of coffee. Well, fresh air ought to fix us up. Remember, we agreed to go to the old cemetery. Careful. It's so slippery. It looks very different this time of year. I'd forgotten the place was so deep in the woods. Greetings, all of you. You're right on time. He's here. Of course he is. He said he would be, didn't he? You, uh, you don't know what trouble you got us into. Oh, yes, I do. You threw me to the warlord. I was thrown into jail. I know, I know, I know. Don't bore me with details. You were given a remarkable opportunity, but not one of you got to first base. Well, it was all so frustrating. Life always is. And so are dreams. Well, how would you handle a situation where everything has to be checked and, and double-checked? I wouldn't stand for it. Well, you'd have to, unless you were a dictator. Your ancestors under this ground came here to be free. They acted for themselves, did things in their own way. And how many died young? You just read the dates on these gravestones. That's irrelevant. Irrelevant? That we've learned to prevent the diseases they died from? If you think it's progress to extend the span of human life... Why are you working to wipe out your entire universe in one instant? That's not our intention. It's too early to pass judgment on what we can do in the future. Too late, I'd say. In view of the way you've already bungled things. Yeah, but now with the tools you've given us, well, we'll get things on the right track. You never had any tools. It was quite clear from the beginning that our experiment would be too much for you to handle. You brought us the capsule. I brought you a time capsule only. Often a very useful tool for stretching the mind. Well, then help us to use it. Oh, no. No, that's up to you. Too early, too late. Anything is possible in the time machine. And right now, it's time to go back. Enough of this old graveyard. Let's get out of here. Oh, race you down the hill. Not me. I feel very tired all of a sudden. I have a, a headache. I'll, I'll see you at the car. <laughs> Having car trouble? I thought I'd warm up the motor, but the darn thing won't start. Hey, you wrecked the battery. Jack, look at the gas gauge. Well, well, it's empty. I swear we... we... We filled it yesterday. Didn't we, Ma? It sounds crazy, but I don't remember. It's quite a hike to the nearest gas station. But the summer station is closed in... In February. What did you say? I said the station is closed in... I, I, I'm all mixed up. Uh, what day is today? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not working, so... It must be a holiday. 
I feel as though I've been away for a month. Hmm. An old graveyard can be a very unsettling place. What, what, what time is it? Well, on my watch, it's two minutes to one. We've been here nearly an hour. An hour? But what's the date? Well, my watch says it right here. It's January the 1st. Jan- January the 1st? What happened to the whole month of January? But that's not possible. You mean that all that happened to us didn't... Was it a dream? Well, if it was, I'm glad. <laughs> so am I. Well, then, don't look so gloomy, you two. Happy New Year. All things are possible. It's really just the beginning. Minutes, hours, days, a month. The major events of a lifetime can pass through the human mind within a matter of seconds. And what do we mean by progress? I'm inclined to believe the 1980s are a good deal better than many people say they are. Perhaps, to use Shakespeare's phrase, time is always out of joint. In their struggle for existence, those early American settlers were forced to move slowly. Today, the frightening part about heading into the future is not speed. It's the direction we are taking. I'll be back shortly. It's not unusual to come across a ghost in an old graveyard, but a ghost of the future? Our ghost, if that's what it was, offered some tantalizing possibilities. At least he indicated there are better things ahead. Author George Orwell painted a far gloomier picture, but we're so close to 1984 that some of Orwell's predictions can't possibly come true. Or can they? We are forced to revert to that well-worn cliché, only time will tell. Our cast included Russell Horton, Marion Seldes, Paul Hecht, and Arnold Moss. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Raven House Paperback Mysteries. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.